looking at all places and in all different, but there's sometimes we get to the place that we get encumbered and entangled and weighted down with weights to the degree that we can't go higher in the Lord. If you don't loose the weights, you won't go higher. Amen. Yes. I'll say that again. Yes. If you don't loose the weights, you won't go higher. Now see, the scripture says the weights and the sin. All right. We think that weights are sin. Weights are not necessarily sin. Right. Weights may be right where you are because you see, some of us used to be 126. Right. <laughs> right. Amen. I used to be 126. And how many know I ain't 126 no more? Amen. And when I get beyond the 126 that I used to, and I was used to carrying 126, used to running with 126, used to acting with 126. When I get to 250, 126 is a little, little, little way back there, and 250 is harder to carry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. Come on. And right you about it. Go someplace that God has called you to go to a higher place. Than, I'm not talking about where you are. I'm talking about to it because He didn't say come up to where you are or where you were. Because see, some of us were and we come down. Now He's saying come up. He ain't talking about where you were. All right. You understand what I'm talking about? You may have been saved at one time and you turned away from the Lord and backed away. He ain't talking about coming up to where you were. Yeah. He's talking about coming higher, higher. in Him. Higher. Higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at somebody say hi. Higher. higher. Look at somebody say hi. Higher. higher. My, my, my. You gotta let go. Look. Some weight. Some weight. Let go some weight. Mm -hmm. Gotta let go. How'd I get in there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, that's kinda heavy to me. There might be some disappointment there. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. Might be. How many know disappointment ain't sin? Yeah. Disappointment can weigh you. Weigh you down. And then my wife came in and she said, honey, you sweat. Why are you sweating so much? Excuse me. Well, I had a little bit more weight than I was used to yeah. carrying. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I couldn't walk the way. Y'all saw that one, didn't you? Y'all saw that one coming. <laughs> that one right there is fear. Okay. Well, <laughs> then you want to hold them up more? You want to carry my weights? Because see, see, we want to give our weights to somebody else. Yeah. You walk yeah. up into a room yeah. encumbered with all kinds of mess yeah. in your life, yeah. and you sit down at a table where everybody's happy, everybody's singing. You walk into the church house and you sit down next to somebody, and they're just singing and blessing the Lord, you and you bring like a your along. Weight and sit down next to them, and they look at you, and now they don't want to praise the Lord. <laughs> because of your, the word says, and she read it in the Amplified, it says, strip off. Saints, what is it in your life That's right. that God is saying, strip off? Strip off. Amen. Thank you. Right. Right. Might be old boy. <laughs> Might be old girl. Because see, some of you got hurt 20 years ago. Uh -huh. And your heart ain't functioning uh -huh. the way that it used to be. Yeah, come on. Uh oh. Got more ways. That's hard. Somebody broke your heart 15 years ago. And you're still married to them. You're still married to her. You're still married to him. But they broke your heart. But you can't deal with your wife or your husband the way you're supposed to deal with them because of the way. Well, <laughs> what's he going to do with the way? Because see, weight's easy to beset us. Yeah. Yeah. You're walking along trying to live for the Lord and the next thing you know, one of the church members says something. Yeah. Uh -huh. You're walking along living for the Lord, trying to do right, working and functioning with the choir, with the ushers, and somebody comes into the church house and they don't appreciate your ushering and they look at you like you're crazy. And next thing you go, what you looking at me for? Why, why are you looking at me like that? What you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> now you don't come clean up out the spirit. 
here. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh no, I've been saved. Don't tell me that. I've been saved for a while myself. And this went to help a couple live. that was ma in marital conflict. Told the brothers that went with me to be careful because the brother was going to try to push your button. He was intoxicated. Amen. Had been attending the church. A member of the church. A leader at one time in the church. Amen. Well, help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Got to talking to him. He said, I'll knock her out. I said, no, brother, you ain't going to knock her out right while I'm here. I'll knock, and I'll knock you out. I said, okay. Oh. What you going to do? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, brother said, hang it on. See, some of you got some stuff that's still hanging on. Amen. 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 Some things that you've said and things that you've done and then the ways that you've acted and that you're acting right now are the result of weight that you have not stripped off. It's a result of the sin that you have not allowed the Lord to clean you up from. And everything looks fine now. People look at you and they don't see no weight. They look at you doing that and everything is fine with her. But they don't look underneath. Yeah, right, yeah. They don't look behind. Yeah. They don't look, they watch it the way you walk and you seem like you're walking pretty good, but they don't realize that you got a weight on your leg. Right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's keeping you from going higher in the Lord. Now some of y'all play basketball, some of y'all play sports, amen. And when you put these on, you put them on so that when you go to jump, you can jump a little higher. But you don't play the game with the weights on. You take the weights off when you get in the game. Some ability to go higher. You can't go higher until you get rid of the weight. And God is saying, this ain't what I'm saying. God is saying, it's time to go higher. You've been saved for months. You've been saved for years. And you still, every time you get to that place, you can't go any further. God begins to use you, wants to talk to you. And every time they bring it up in church, See, some of y'all get upset when we start talking about tithes. Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm going there. I usually back off, but I ain't going to back off today. Hallelujah. Your money don't belong to you. Your money is a gift from God. You think it comes from the government. But it's amazing at how you can give the government your 22, 23, 24, 28 percent on April the 15th when the government says give me my due All right. you fill out your paper and whatever your tax bracket is you make sure it gets there don't you amen amen, amen. amen. Ron, make sure it gets there by the 15th amen. don't want nothing to hold you back because you gotta pay your taxes at 28% yep. I mean some of y'all in that bracket amen. hallelujah <laughs> all the Lord says give me 10% Ten percent? That means if it's a hundred dollars, you mean I gotta give ten dollars? Yes. Yes. You make more than a hundred dollars a month. You make more than a hundred dollars a week. And you shuffle it at ten dollars when it none of it belonged to you in the first place. Amen. And see, it's been a long time since I've been there. Well, I can go to the club and mm. put down $10 in less than an hour. Mm. In 10 minutes. <laughs> See, I'm talking about back in my day. <laughs> I ain't talking about what it is today. I don't know what it is today. <laughs> you can put $20 on the, on, on the bar and you got a, you got a halfway deal. You can do something with $20. Today, you can't do nothing with $20. You better bring your own bottle. <laughs> But see, you do that three, four, five times a week. A week. And God is asking you for 10%. And you struggle at that. And you want to go higher in God. That's the weight. You are at a place in God. At a place, a level of your giving. And you don't want to go any higher. You've allowed your giving at the standard that you are to become a weight to you. My back. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? A weight is a burden. Yeah, yeah. A weight is a, is a drawback. I'm not talking about necessarily as physical, but when you have an emotional drain on your spirit, that is a weight. I think about him all the time. I think about her all the time. How they did me. I, I'm going, how you doing? I'm going fine. How you doing? God bless you. God bless you. Everything's fine. No, you got to wait, sis. You got to wait, brother. Amen. Amen. They've been gone. Amen. They may even be dead. Amen. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of y'all got weights from dead folks. Yep. <laughs> Oh my, my, my. Somebody that passed away. Why am I here? Why do I believe God put me here? Because there was a whole bunch of other places I was looking to go. I was going to talk about recovery. Amen. Having just come through recovery, I was going to deal with recovery. Amen. But how many know you can't have recovery without some pain? That's right. That's right. God wants you to go higher, but you don't want to go through the pain that he's calling you to go through. You've got to die in order to go higher. Yes. Your flesh can yes, you've got to die. Because I want to cuss him out. I want to slap him upside the head. God said, go on about your business and let me handle this business. This is my business. You handle my business. My business is to love him. My business is to love her, but I don't feel like love ain't a feeling. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> oh, come on now. Love ain't a feeling. See, the world done messed us up. You got to feel it. <laughs> yeah, you can go there in your own mind. That's all right. That's, that's good. That's good. But love ain't necessarily a feeling. I can love somebody and don't feel nothing. All right. <laughs> Well, yeah, that well. sounds a little strange there. Well. But he said to love those that hate you. And those that do what, brother? Spitefully. Despitefully. I speak all manner of evil against you for my sake. See, see, see. But oh no. You say you're going on with the Lord anyhow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh oh. <-uh. laughs> uh oh. Amen. Amen. You got to get rid of the way. Got to get rid of it. So this one's been hiding, hiding, hiding. <laughs> but I got to get rid of him too. <laughs> That's why I've been sweating so much. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't it funny? Ain't it funny all that weight you got? Put you through all kinds of changes that you don't even want to go through. You shouldn't be going through. But you haven't let it go yet. When you gonna let it go? The hurt, the disappointment, the fear, the jealousy. Because see, all the enemy does is use that. To keep you from going higher. And the Lord says it's time to go higher. If you're unsaved today, all you gotta do is let your sin go and go higher. But how do I do that? Acknowledge to the Lord you can't do it by yourself. Because you see, one of the things of recovery is that you can't do it by yourself. Amen. 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 You remember David? David and Ziklag, mm. and Ziklag got towed up. Mm -hmm. I mean, the city of Ziklag, they came in there and they wrecked the city. Tore it all up. Took his wives. Yep. In that day, they was, they was allowed to have wives. We ain't allowed to have wives today. Or husbands. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow we don't know. I don't know how we do that. <laughs> took his wives, took all the family members of all the people in the, in the other place, amen, took them all. Mm -hmm. And they got so mad with David, they said, that, well, we're going to get you because you're the king. They came to our town and messed everything up. We're going to get you for doing what you did. Mm -hmm. 
All he was doing was doing what God told him to do. Isn't that funny how people come after you when you try to live right? When you try to do the will of the Lord? When you try to walk up right before God, they come after you? David didn't know what to do. Folks cried so much the Bible said they had no more strength to cry. Mm. That's a whole lot of crying for men of war. I'm talking about warriors. I ain't talking about nobody that's sitting on the side. I'm talking about these are David's mighty men of war who are crying and in so much anguish and stress because, they, because of their family being taken that they could not cry anymore. Mm -hmm. David didn't know what to do. He laid on his face before God, called for the hip hop. Yeah. Put on the ephod. Uh -huh. Began to cry out to God and ask Him for direction. Mm -hmm. God, should I pursue them or should I leave them? Now, you know that's a good choice right there. Mm -hmm. They done took my wife and my kids and I'm going to God. Do I recover everything or I let it all go because I know that you can provide everything else? Amen. Think about that. Mm -hmm. And whatever God told David he was going to do, you hear me? That's right. Amen. God said, no, David, you're going to pursue. I haven't lost my place. I ain't lost my place. Because the weights that you carry are sometimes things that you got to let go. But you got to ask God what to do, how to do, where to do. Mm -hmm. David said, for the God told David, you pursue. So he's on his way now to pursue. Comes across somebody that the enemy left behind. See, there are folks out there who used to laugh at you that God is going to use them to help boost you into your destiny. But you don't want their help. That's a way. That's a way. That man told them where they were, went and found them, and the Bible says that they, they fought and they killed the enemy all night long, more than 24 hours. They was just cutting up and killing. Wiped out the enemy completely, except for two or four hundred, I forget how many it was, that went back on, on donkeys. Now you ride in on a Palomino. <laughs> you ride out of your city on a Palomino. You're a great warrior. I'm going to war. And I'm going to tear up. <laughs> and now you come back in town on a donkey. donkey. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, bro? <laughs> See, God knows how to put you in a place where you can't do nothing else. That's it. See, I used to think I was Reynolds wrapped when I was in the street. Mm. All right. No, no, I'm not going to tell him that. That's <laughs> better than getting in my face. When I went to minister to this man, and tell him what the Lord said. The old man rose up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've been saying, pastoring, ministering for a long time. Now where did that come from? Yeah. It was a way that I had not dealt with. Some of you got anger issues and you don't know where the anger comes from. You got a weight down there that you haven't allowed the Lord to crucify. You get mad at me over some stuff that's so silly, it don't make a bit of difference. Amen. You need to deal with that, brother. You need to deal with that, sister. Amen. You get mad at your spouse and you want to, girl, you don't leave me alone. <laughs> Where does that come from? <laughs> it's time to go higher. It's time to go higher. And see, that some of your children still living at home. And some of y'all get that way at home. Hallelujah. Amen. Throwing stuff around the bedroom. After mom and daddy go out the room. See. <laughs> uh -huh. Cause you didn't pay for right nothing. <laughs> One of my children, I took everything out their room. I hear that. Been there, done that, that, sir. I sure did. Took the bed. Yep. <laughs> took right the toys, the games. Took it all. Uh, uh, uh. You, you didn't pay for nothing else. <laughs> you want to get that crazy? Okay, I'll show you how crazy it is. 
see, don't everybody start looking around and try to figure out which one of my kids it was. <laughs> I'm through. Look at somebody and say, come up higher. Come up higher. If you don't want to come up higher, if you don't believe God, because see, this is an individual thing. A couple of weeks ago, past two weeks, God has been calling us to revival. I don't know if you've heard it. I don't know if you've heard it, but he's calling us to revival. And my thought was to have a revival. But the Lord said it's not a revival service that we're to have. It is a revival experience that we are to have. What did you do when you first got saved? How often did you pray? Right now, some of your prayer life is awake to you. You are at the level that you were or at the level that you were, but in order for you to go higher, you're going to have to bring your prayer life up a little bit. Some of you are reading just as much as you read when you first got saved. How many know you got to be reading more now because there's a greater weight of responsibility on you. you got to get into the Word, not just read a few scriptures, but you got to study the Word. And then once you study it, you got to do that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do that thing. Do that thing. <laughs> I don't know if that's in the right place. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you got to do it. Because talking it is one thing, but you got to do what God says. Yes. And see, what he's told me to do ain't the same thing he's told this brother to do. So I can't walk at the level he's walking. I can't pray at the level he's praying. I can't study. I've got to do what God is calling me to do, to go higher. Amen. How long have you been saved? You've been praying for two minutes every, every week, once a week since you got saved. Two minutes. And that's when you come to church. Don't you think you graduated a little higher? Amen. Than that by now? Amen. I'm through. I'm through. We got baptism yet. I don't know where you are. I, I, I tell you, if you're not saved, I challenge you in the name of the Lord. You think you got life now. Your life has not begun until you allow Jesus to give you a new life. To be born again. All of the trash that you've been through, all of the stuff that you have experienced, Jesus died to take the weight of that off you. Your mama left you when you was 10. Your daddy ain't never been in your life. You did drugs. You've been a prostitute. You done robbed this place and stuck up that person. You done gang bang, hit folks, cut folks and done all kinds of stuff. The Lord wants to wipe that stuff away. You looking over your shoulder. Let God deal with it. He can clean it all up. And see when other folks are looking at you, calling you all kinds of stuff. God will look at you and say, it's gone, honey. I ain't looking at nothing. Son, it's been washed away. Washed. Daughter, it's off the smoke. It doesn't matter anymore. Come on, whoever you are. Come on, it's time to give your life to the Lord. It's time to start all over again. Come on, don't worry about the person next to you. You've been saved for a while. You remember the church? You're on the usher board, the deacon board, the trustee board, the, the board, the board. But you know you're not where you ought to be. You know you're not at the place that God has called you to be. I'm not talking about the person next to you. I'm not talking about old girl next to you or old boy next to you. I'm not talking about your homie, your girlfriend, or your buddy. Where has God called you to be? Come on, it's time to go higher. You know what? God's got something for you better than where you are. But you can't get it to it there. You know, it's like one of them games. You got to, you got to, once you get that one, then you can go to the next level. But you can't go to the next level until you get that. And you chasing that all over the place, chasing that all over the place. No, all you got to do is give your life to Jesus. All you got to do is confess right now. Mm. All you got to do is say, God, I want to go higher, but I got 
lots of weights. I don't even know what they are. But I'm asking you to deal with it. Whoever you are, come on. Doesn't matter if you're a minister. Doesn't matter if you're a deacon. Elder. Amen. Doesn't matter if you're a bishop. Amen. 